I want to show you a couple of, move on to a couple types of microaggressions. Um, and these are from our research uh, that we conducted with focus groups um, of black students at uh, three different predominantly white institutions in different parts of the country. Um, one in Kentucky and two in um, Seattle, uh, one at a, one was a medical school, two were groups of undergrads. And these are some of the categories of microaggressions that came out of that research, which are actually very similar to the work that was done by Sue and colleagues in 2007, which sort of brought a lot of new attention to the concept of microaggressions. And I have sort of a category on the left and an example on the right. And I tried to come up with examples that were like almost always microaggressions, but it's really important to also understand that microaggressions are context dependent. So you could come up with a situation where the same action and or or the thing that the person says or does in one situation may be a microaggression and not in another. Um, but uh, but the, most of these are, are usually microaggressions. So uh, it, yeah, and if you have any questions about these, please. Um, feel free to like type them in the chat. We're gonna stop in a, maybe a few minutes and take a look at some questions, but people often have questions about these. I find a lot of people will say, oh my goodness, like I did that, or I didn't know that was a microaggression, or I don't understand why that's a microaggression. And if that's the case, I definitely wanna take some time to go over that. But you know, if this is all like, yeah, I'm cool with that, then we don't need to spend more time on it. <laughs> um, and here's some more microaggressions that came out of that same study. And I want to point out the last two on here. They're not, they're not actions, but keep in mind that microaggressions, they don't have to be things people say or do. They can be environmental in nature. So, um, you know, so if I go into a fancy hotel and all the artwork is only, you know, uh, white people, you know, in, in fancy turn of the century outfits, you know, that might make me feel excluded if there's no depictions of, of anybody like me. Or, or if I go into a clinic and um, you know, and there's a very specific cultural flavor that um, that excludes um, people from marginalized groups, or um, what we call environmental attack, where you have um, known affronts to a person's um, heritage on display. So, yeah. And then I'm gonna let Matthew talk about a few other categories of microaggressions as well. Yeah, while we worked on that last set together, I was looking into the literature that Kevin Nadal's done where, and as, as we go through further examples after this, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of overlap them because as you can see, there is some degree of, of, of overlap of the, the sort of meta themes, but throughout, as you look at this list of common sources of bias SGM people, um, uh, uh, report, there's, um, you know, there, there are a couple common themes. There's, uh, there are, uh, there's the expectation that you sort of behave as if you're heterosexual and cisgender, meaning conform to traditional modes of dress, of uh, gendered expectations. Uh, this is met with, met with leering or glaring or mocking or violent attack. Well, no, that's a macroaggression. Uh, as a microaggression, it's met with leering or glaring or mocking. Um, the denial of SGM reality, like accusations of being oversensitive or emotionally labile. So there's that kind of bleed in and out with assumptions of psychopathology. And um, there are also assumptions of hypersexualization that apply uh, to SGM people. So uh, that ranges from the assumption that the person you know who is a gay, bi, or queer man is HIV positive, to um, the idea that um, that you're uncomfortable of bringing SGM people around your children because uh, somehow apparently that would require a really graphic sexual description. Um, so so all of these or or the um, I, I guess the most um, acceptable you often see is sort of the exoticization, which is that idea that there's just something really fun or playful that that we're all Peter Pan types just waiting to show you a magical night on the town. 